Hello there everybody, it is me Fizer Bunny and welcome, welcome back to another Sims 4 speed building video. I am so excited to be back and today we're speed building a house called the Suburban Chateau. So this house is a family home that has three bedrooms and three bathrooms and it's mainly inspired by French Renaissance architecture specifically um, the architecture of the Chateau of the Loire Valley in France and also a little bit of fairy tale inspiration as well because Beauty and the Beast and speaking of Beauty and the Beast I actually just watched the movie with my best friend last night and I immediately wanted to do this recording while everything is fresh because honestly it was an absolutely magical experience. We watched it on a, we watched it on IMAX 3D and for me it's like the best way to watch it because you know like it's just much more amazing on 3D and basically um this commentary is probably gonna get spoilery so if you guys haven't watched the film yet i highly suggest that you guys watch it first before spoiling yourself even though not much has changed uh you know with <laughs> the original movie itself except for the fact that pretty much all the major and ma minor characters have a much more elaborate backstory which i did appreciate uh, but other than that, um, it's basically the same story. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to the house. So the build was supposed to have a very elaborate portico that has three two-story high archways. But as you guys can see, when I tried to do it initially, it just didn't work. So I... It just settled for, um, this kind of like curved portico. Uh, which might be reminiscent with um, the White House portico for many of you guys. You know, it has like the curved um, portico and stuff. That's probably what it's going to be reminiscent to you guys. Kiss the archways. I really like the idea of the archways as porticos, but it just did not work. Um, so yeah. And this is the part where we're adding some fairy tale elements to it. We have this kind of corner tower over here with like a turret, which is very reminiscent of French Renaissance architecture, you know, like Chenonceau, for example, Chateau, Chateau de Chenonceau. That's the thing that I immediately think of every time I see um, those types of turrets. And then over here, we're working on the garage area. And this is actually the first time that I'm making this. Um, but basically, there is kind of like supposed to be an archway um, around the garage area. It's complicated to explain, but there's always like this drop off area. I believe it's called Port Cocher. Port Cocher. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but that's usually how it's labeled in floor plans. It's basically like the open archway where cars go underneath. Um, so. I really wanted to have that because I was looking at a lot of like French style suburban homes and so many of them have this like port cochere. So um, I might be pronouncing that wrong. So yeah. And right here, I'm also kind of like enlarging the garage, which I originally intended to make into a two car garage. You know, it's it could have a space for two cars but eventually i actually split the garage into two and um make it into like different rooms and stuff which i will be talking more about as we get into it a little bit later on so the color they actually chose for the wall paint is a very interesting color um it's kind of like this grayish bluish color which i've never used before but i actually really like how it looks it looks really different from um many of my other builds before and it actually works really well it looks very french which is quite surprising because I didn't even use mansard roofs and mansard roofs are like the quintessential French um, 
you know, architectural detail. So the roofs here are just normal hip roof, but they are slightly higher pitch, um, which I think makes it look very French. And of course, we have the, t the turret in the corner, which also gives it that kind of fairy tale esque look to it. So speaking of fairy tale, I just have to talk about Beauty and the Beast, you guys, because to be completely honest, um, when I first heard about the movie, I was very skeptical because usually the way adaptations go, the original usually is the better movie. But in the case of Beauty and the Beast, I could honestly tell you guys that I feel like the newer version is much better than the original. I love everything about it. Every single aspect of the new movie, the cast, the music, the visuals, the production design everything the cinematography it is the perfect movie and i kid you guys not but it's probably my new favorite movie ever like i i love watching movies i love watching historical movies like some of my favorites are marie antoinette with kirsten dunst and also clash of the titans which was a well a very hated movie when it first came out in 2020 in 2010 um but I really like those movies because visually they're amazing and they kept me engaged um, all throughout the movie. I hate it every time there's like boring bits in the movie because sometimes I have a tendency to just sleep through all the boring bits. Like when I, when I watched um, the Finding Dory, for example, you guys are probably going to hate me for this, but when I watched Finding Dory and even like the that one movie with the minions and stuff what's it what's that what's that called i'm not sure i'm old um but yeah when i watched those movies i literally like fell asleep halfway through and when i woke up i was just oh what's happening because you know i get bored really easily and if a movie can get me engaged all throughout then i will pretty much just sleep through it so um beauty and the beast kept me engaged 100 percent um i love the music you guys it's just amazing and it's so surprising, but I feel like my favorite songs in the entire movie are the new songs. I love Evermore by Dan Stevens and Josh Groban, and I also love um, Days in the Sun as well. Um, you know, Disney's Vivo channel usually releases all these new songs Um you know, a couple of days before the premiere. So, you know, before the movie even came out, I was already hooked onto the soundtrack and it was just, it just made everything more magical, just like amazing. And I don't know, but I think my favorite song has to be Evermore. Uh, you know, when Beast performs it, it was just so, um, it was just so, magical to be honest and even though that was like a more tragic part not not really tragic but it was more of like a gut-wrenching part where it's like where they get separated and stuff and that whole scene where bell tells the beast you know um you know can you truly i'm not sure how she says it exactly but she says something that like if you truly if you truly love someone you wouldn't keep them as a prisoner that's basically the point of what she said and i'm just like i literally cried i i swear i i cried maybe three or four times in this movie like seriously um yes and i was watching it in public and i was just like wiping my tears away like nothing happened yeah nothing happened but honestly um I'm very familiar with the fact that the movie had a lot of criticism, you know, before it came out. Um, but honestly, I didn't really mind any of the performances. You know, Emma Watson singing, I didn't mind. Um, the fact that Josh Gad kind of liked um, Gaston, I didn't mind it as well. I don't know why people are making such a big deal out of it, but there's so few things that you could say negatively about this movie that every little thing I feel like people are over exaggerating it so for me it's the perfect movie I honestly could not give it any criticism you know like even if I wanted to even if I nitpicked I could not give it any criticism other than the fact that it ended way too soon and I need like 50 more hours of it and the DVD needs to come out like right now because it's gonna be on a loop for sure it's just 
like I need more and I feel like a piece of me is incomplete right now because I've been waiting for the movie for like the longest time I've watched every trailer at work in the car in school with my friends when I'm by myself I literally lived and breathed this movie for like the better part of a year or two so now that it's all over I feel like a piece of me is missing so um I don't know I was just so happy with everything and Dan Stevens as the Beast was just perfect I've been such a huge fan of him in Downton Abbey and stepping into those shoes is he did such an amazing job I loved Ewan McGregor as Lumiere I loved um, Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts I love all of the characters even Emma Watson singing which might get controversial but I really didn't mind it and I honestly like the idea that the that she sung for herself Because, I don't know, but if I liked a song in a movie and I knew that the main character did not sing that part, it kind of takes a little bit away from it. So, I'm just so happy with it overall. And yes, you guys, um, this is a pre-recorded video. You guys are probably going to be seeing this a week or two from now, from when I'm recording this. What's the date today? It's the 21st of March. So, you guys are probably going to be seeing it. Um, in a couple of days, uh, so, yeah, just keep that in mind, you know, um, I actually watched, um, The Beauty and the Beast as, almost as soon as it came out, not exactly on premiere day, but I just, you know, like, literally my friend, she needed to take time off work just so that she could watch it with me because I was just, I was just obsessed, literally obsessed. And I've been posting so much about it on Instagram and stuff. So it's just, it's crazy. It's such a crazy phenomenon. So the kitchen, I will talk briefly. Um, I went for kind of like a French style and um, I love the fact that I was able to fit in that center island. I feel like it really completes the whole look. But basically, I noticed that in many French style kitchens, there are cabinets everywhere. There's like so much cabinets. So I just tried to recreate that. And these cabinets and counters actually that came with city living work really well with like that French style look. So yeah. And also a lot of the decorative elements in this house are kind of like French inspired like there's a lot of emphasis on the culinary aspects and also like on sunflowers I think almost every room has like a sunflower themed item to it so um yeah just keep that in mind and of course just adding in a million different different clutters to just complete the look so anyway let me just talk about oh my voice cracked there for a second <clears throat> Excuse me, but anyway, let me just talk about the family who lives in this house. So I had in mind a family of three people in this house. The dad is a composer. The dad is a famous composer. The mom is a famous painter. And the kid is kind of stuck in limbo uh, between um, wanting to be a famous, you know, a famous internet personality and a game developer. So, you know. Um, that's, you know, they have a teenage kid who wants to be a YouTuber, basically, or who wants to be a gamer on YouTube. Either way, um, so basically, the whole decoration scheme of this house basically revolves around this family. There is a special room for the composer, and there's also a special room, or actually a special couple of rooms for our painter so you know i i made i made sure to personalize this house to really match the personality of the people who live here uh and also at the same time i made it functional as well which is once again it's a trend that i'm trying to do with all of my recent builds i'm trying to make it as functional as possible so i'm trying to minimize the use of the move objects sheet and also trying to make sure that all the items are functional and the sims can use them without getting stuck and i have already play tested this house and it does work really well so 
yay for that. Um, but for the dining room, I went for a very subtle kind of pastel color. Um, actually, many, most of the rooms in this house have a pastel color scheme because I felt like that was really French. So, um, yeah. And also some accents of bricks in some rooms. And I also used a lot of blacks and whites for the furniture because, you know, it's very chic and it's very Francais. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited to um, talk about Beauty and the Beast. I just need to get it out of my system. Um, if you guys haven't watched it yet, I really, really, really recommend that you do because it's so worth it. It is, it's, it's so worth it. It's amazing. Uh, so right now we're working on the living room and the living room is actually a really, really big room. It's a very large space. Um, so basically the living room, it's basically where most of the casual activities happen. You know, the Sims can come here to watch, um, TV. They can come here for a game of chess or they can even read some books. Even though there is an actual office area in this, um, you know, in this house, um, there's still a couple of bookshelves in the living room. Just, you know, they, they're obsessed with their books. So yeah. Also, my game is still lagging. So every time you guys see me pause, it means that the game is giving me like a couple of seconds of lag, which is still, it's still a thing. Um, I'm not sure what's going on exactly, but I've received many comments from uh, my other viewers of the fact that their game is lagging like crazy. So, um, you know, like, I guess I'm not the only one who's experiencing all this lag, but basically I'm just tolerating the lag right now. I'm not really making a big deal out of it. So it's, you know, I just try to ignore it basically. So yeah, I hope it gets fixed, but I think that's just how things work right now that we have so many expansion packs and stuff packs. I think that's just how it's going to work. So right now we are working on kind of like the composer's room. Uh, the initial idea for this room was actually supposed to be um, a playroom or like a game room. So I wanted to fit in like um, some musical instruments. But in the end, I went with having a karaoke and also a piano. So, you know, like a composer, the composer guy could bring his clients here or his friends or the producers here and maybe test out some music or maybe even sing some music for themselves. So I've actually tested this out because this room turned out looking a little cramp but it does work the karaoke machine works so it's it's all good um and this octagonal room right here i'm not sure if we're gonna decorate it now or later on but this octagonal room that's going to be kind of like a game room so i will fit in like a jenga table in there later on and since this is a little bit more of a luxurious, classy house, I decided to use a lot more expensive furniture than I usually would. And also some really expensive chandelier, well, expensive looking chandeliers that came with vampires game pack because <laughs> um, I felt like they really matched the look and I really like those chandeliers they're very low which means that they can work with any wall height and it and it turned out really nice so this is the game room it's kind of like a secret room actually because in a little bit I will discover that there is actually um a secret door that's actually a bookshelf so you guys will see me actually switch the, there we go yeah it's yeah there we go it's like uh, where I switched the door into an actual bookshelf. So what's surprising about this build is that, um, I actually included a lot of furnishing that I would usually edit out, like the hallways and the foyer and some of the bathrooms. I would usually edit those out, but you know, I just decided to include them here because, you know, it's this build total to about, 35 minutes which is actually not a bad length for me um it's probably going to be a little bit longer when i put this whole thing together including the house tour and stuff but it's about around maybe 35 to 40 39 minutes or something um so yeah i decided to include most of the building and furnishing process except for some landscaping and also some bathroom furnishing because those just took so much time so um 
I intentionally decided to not record anything, so yeah. And this right here, the room that we're furnishing is actually supposed to be kind of like an entrance closet area, you know, where you would hang the coats and stuff, you know, when you have guests and it's winter time, everybody's wearing like layers and layers of clothes, that's where you would put them. Uh, so the room that we're furnishing right now is the office or the formal office area. So, you know, we have a composer and he probably does a lot of reading or a lot of filing for like archives and things. He probably does a lot of research and he probably accepts a lot of important guests in his house. So this is where he would take them to maybe um have meetings and, you know, have like consultations and stuff about the music and the brief and stuff. So, you know, he would sit here in this formal space and this is where he would maybe write or maybe even talk to clients and stuff. So, yeah, I just had to put that leather sofa because it looked so corporate like I needed to have that in this house. Um, So we're now finally working on the second level and on the second floor, there are three bedrooms and two full bathrooms. Um, the master bedroom is such an interesting shape because of that whole turret thing. Um, it turned out looking really interesting, but I actually really like how the master bedroom turned out. It's actually a series of many different rooms. Uh, so the master bedroom, of course, has the actual bedroom itself, but it also has a walk-in closet, a bathroom, and also a secret kind of painting secret area i'm not really sure what to call it but i used those um door bookshelves once again to have this like secret space there we go for like our painter mama uh so she can have her own private space for it so um for the master bedroom i just kept the color scheme very neutral and i just had to use this canopy bed because it just looks so classy um and once again using some really expensive furniture <laughs> Um, it's top quality furniture, people. Like, s composers are paid really well. I mean, I think they're, they're paid really well. You know, Alan Menken, um, I, I think he might earn a lot of money, or maybe not. I'm not really sure, but, you know, this house definitely isn't a lug luxury mansion, but it's quite luxurious for a suburban home. If you guys get what I mean, it's not exactly like Donald Trump level real estate mansion, $10 billion. You know, this is a little bit more of like, um, you know, like a family who can afford things, a family who is reasonably privileged, um, and, you know, people who are kind of in the upper middle class that's kind of how i imagined it uh so i just put a little sitting area over here in the master bedroom just to kind of like fill in this space um because there's just so much doors here there's a door leading outside there's a door that leads to the bathroom there's a door that leads to the um walk-in closet and i have to cough <coughs> excuse me very, very professional, but who cares? Um, and also I used this boat item for the very first time, which I actually really like. Um, you know, I, it's kind of like a hint maybe that the composer who lives in this house is maybe composing for the Little Mermaid, which I've been hearing a lot about. Um, but I'm not sure who is the actual, um, people who are going to play it or anything, but yeah. Um, all I heard are just rumors. Anyway. Um, also, um, there are on the sides of like the house, there are roofs that are sticking into the actual house itself, but they don't really mess up the gameplay that much. Everything's still functional. Um, and I made sure that the roof that the, the parts of the roof that enter the house are not in a significant room. So they don't interfere with like the flow and the layout of the house so yeah and now we're working on the master bathroom and of course it has double sinks and um it's actually a little bit on the smaller side um but you know it works uh nothing too over the top because you know these guys Whoever lives here comes from a very simple childhood who just happened to make it big in Hollywood as a composer or in Broadway and you know they they're living well but they're also really humble as well so yeah there's also a lot of bookshelves 
are just random shelves in this house which because i feel like they add some personality so yeah i just stuck with the, the shelves and <laughs> i don't even know what i'm talking about but right now we're working on the kind of like secret painting space area of the house um and this is a room that's exclusive for the mother of the house because you know she also works for the family and at the same time she pursues her passion in painting so you know she made this room exclusively for herself um because you know when you're painting you know i paint I'm not a good painter, but when I'm painting or when I'm drawing or when I'm sketching, usually I like to be alone. I like to be by myself. I like to have some privacy. Um, and I feel like that room would be perfect for that. So now we're working on the guest bedroom, which honestly, it's probably the most boring bedroom ever. Literally nothing exciting in it. Like the color scheme is just blah. Uh, the decoration is just meh, basic, and even the paintings are like very boring, which is perfect, and it's exactly what I was going for because you know it's a guest bedroom. You don't really know who's gonna stay here, so the best way to play that game is just to make it as neutral as possible, so it doesn't bother people if it's like too specific. It's if it's like a color that people hate. If it's a color that, or like if it's like a style that people don't like, um, you know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty contemporary style, which I feel like a lot of people will be able to be comfortable with. So that was kind of the idea for the guest bedroom, really quickly furnished as well. Right now we're working on the kid's bedroom. And like I said, this kid is kind of stuck in limbo between being in the entertainment industry, being in social media, being a video gamer, being a video game developer. It's this person is all over the place, you know, so um, I just made it as kind of like interesting as possible by having like these personal touches to it like these posters and also a lot of video game consoles like there's two video game consoles in this and there's also like a computer as well so this kid is pretty spoiled to be honest you know this this kid basically has everything that you know that i want in my bedroom but um you know like it's 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 all fine i think <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that um, as long as, I think as long as the kids are studying properly, as long as they're not, you know, um, get, getting themselves into mischief, I feel like it'll be cool. You know, as long as they don't do drugs, <laughs> I don't even know how it escalated to that, but, um, I don't really know. It's just the kid that I imagined this to be, uh, was very much an introvert there we go that's a word that i was going for um and you know this kid likes to stay in the room um and you know play video games which there's nothing wrong with you know but also there's nothing wrong with going outside and socializing with people so just the balance of both you know just everything in moderation i don't even know why this is getting so preachy but i could honestly relate though because if i had a choice i would probably be this kid you know i would mooch off my parents i would be on social media i would be on youtube and i would spend all day video gaming so so yeah i love his little setup right here with like the tv and the consoles um i actually combined a bunch of um side tables for that and it actually turned out really well it looked really nice and you know it looked really um it looked like a legit video gaming uh setup so that's pretty cool um and yeah it looks like that is it for like the kids bedroom um let's see here what are we gonna be working on next okay there we go that was a lag <laughs> <laughs> that was like an awkward moment of silence but once again no nowhere to hide from the infamous freezer bunny video game lag so yeah this is the point where i split the garage into multiple parts the 
Part of the garage at the end is actually the one that's intended to have the car kept in it. And then there's this huge room, which is just empty. I just filled it up with a bunch of crates and stuff because I really didn't know what to do with it. It was such a huge room. Initially, I was planning to make it kind of like a party space, you know, throwing in some dance floors and some... Uh, some bars and some DJ booths and stuff but in the end I decided to actually put the bar area in the pool so um, I didn't really need that room for anything because you know I just want to I just wanted to have a bar and when I placed that in the pool I decided to just make that room kind of like a spare room in case we get any expansion packs in the future or stuff packs or game packs uh, you know, so that, you know, you guys would be able to renovate this house easily. You, you know, you could expand it. You can split that room into two and it works. You know, you can put a bunch of new stuff there. So that's pretty cool. But this is the other kind of like painting space for our painter mama. Um, and yeah, it's kind of like her own painting studio where she can just express herself and do whatever she wants. Once again, she, um, invests a lot of money on something that she's passionate about, which is painting. And, you know, she would have her friends come here and maybe she would paint them. There's also a huge mirror. So, you know, she can look at herself as reference. And I also decided to place this kind of like statue thing over here. Maybe she can also make it into like a reference thing. Um, and there's actually two easels here. So maybe she can do two paintings simultaneously. So that would be pretty interesting. I also love that rug, by the way, that I use there. It looks really cool. And then over here, we have a huge garage space, which I basically made into like a workshop. Um, you know, there's really nothing happening here other than the fact that there is a workbench um and yeah that that's kind of why i made it into a workshop i noticed that um in many american households they would use the garage as a workshop so um i felt like that was a very kind of like suburban thing happening by the way this house is not meant to be a themed house okay it's meant to be a suburban house inspired by the french renaissance architecture it's not supposed to be like actual actually in the loire valley because that would be a whole different story that would be a whole different build which i should probably do in the future but for now this is just a suburban home inspired by french architecture located somewhere in suburbia you know stuck in the suburbs nobody probably gets that reference um but if you do let me know um, just want to share with you guys that stuck in the suburbs where when it first came out in the early 2000s I was probably like in fifth or sixth grade and the day it came out was the very first day I got a camera phone. How amazing was that? Uh, and basically what I did is that it was, you know, Disney Channel original movies when they would play it in my country in the Philippines. It would usually be at around 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. at night. And I was literally just recording stuck in the suburbs. Every time there would be, there would be like a musical number, I would get out my new camera phone. I would, I would record it. And yeah, it, it was pretty cool. It was like the Nokia. It was the one for the kids. It's, it was a Nokia one where you could like take off the the casing for it. I, I, I really don't know what it is anymore. But I know that a lot of kids had those. Because I used to see so many commercials on TV um, showcasing that cell phone being used by kids who are going camping and stuff like that. So... I don't know. Those were the good old days. Um, <laughs> by the way, side note, that was not my first phone because when I started, I had like this really um, kind of like this really primitive cell phone before I get I got my first camera phone, which also was my very first phone in Technicolor. So, wow. I know that that sounds ancient for you guys, but that was the generation that I had to live in. I was really young too, so I, you know, having a cell phone made me feel so empowered, made me feel so cool. I would show it off at school, but yeah. So yeah, right now we're just working on the landscaping, and as per usual, 
Um, with what I do when I do these landscapings in suburban themed homes, I have these blobs of like planter beds and I just fill them up with some plants that are relevant to the theme. So what's interesting about the landscaping actually is that I used both hard and soft elements here. Um, like I used a lot of natural looking plants and I also used a lot of, um, kind of like manicured plants, you know, like these, hedges that are cut hedges and topiaries and stuff i used a lot of those and mixed the two together to make it look really organic and the effect is actually really cool but as i mentioned earlier not all of the landscaping will be showcased in this video um because it gets redundant after a while and um you know you guys basically get the gist of it you know pretty much by looking at it right now so um yeah um i think that's all i'm gonna be doing for the landscaping and everything else i will be doing off camera so it looks like that is going to be it for the speed builds by the way the law traits are uh the romantic one the culinary one and also the um uh, the party one. So let's go ahead and cut into the screenshots of the floor plans so you guys can see how everything works. But before I go, I want you guys to leave a comment below letting me know what is your favorite song from Beauty and the Beast. And it could be any iteration. It could be any version. It could be the stage adaptation. It could be the movie adaptation. It could be, you know, the, the animated film. Just let me know which is your favorite song or your favorite songs basically mine i love evermore i love if i can't love her i love bell be our guest um days in the sun i loved um beauty and the beast of course i also loved literally those are like half the songs in the entire thing so anyway um you know i'm just gonna shut up <laughs> i'm glad that i was able to get that out of my system and i'm so excited to hear what you guys have to say but i'm making this video too long by ranting so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up right here okay guys so once again please don't forget to hit that like favorite and subscribe button if you guys had fun watching this video because it really helps out the channel a lot okay you all have an awesome 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 day thank you guys so much for watching enjoy the rest of the video and i will see you guys next time Bye bye